Welcome back to Switch to Linux. So we just kind of have an unscheduled hangout here. I was going to do um, some cube stuff today, but uh, we ran into a, a couple of uh, uh, just a couple of scheduling conflicts with the rest of today. So um, I just decided I'd go ahead and do this. And somebody had sent me a link from a Matthew Moore video that's for response. So I thought I'd go ahead and do that as well, and uh, just kind of talk about some fun stuff. So we're just calling this one here today hanging out and we're going to talk about some thoughts some security etc etc all right so hello everybody hello ryan hello conquerg finally managed to catch one woohoo <laughs> yeah we don't have nearly as much of a schedule as as usual hello i'm i'm a wee sum I'm, I'm i'm a wee sum are you small okay and the gentoo preacher awesome all right very odd for you to stream today. Yes, it is very odd for me to stream today. I thought I'd just go ahead and, and do some of that in light of everything else. So all of the crazy uh, 48 blippies that I got last night while we're trying to record my video were all about this, this, uh, this project here. And so I thought I'd actually talk a little bit about that kind of stuff. Um, hello, Daniel. So um, in business, right, kind of... Kind of, you get what you pay for is kind of one of the things I want to say. Um, hello, Ainu, and hello, hmm, how do I pronounce that one? Dim Dimitro, I guess? Hello. So, uh, we're kind of relaxing today. I made some tea. If anybody's out there and uh, out there across the pond from me, I have some Yorkshire tea with some milk in here for today. It's still too hot to drink. And uh, I made me a plate of snickerdoodle cookies, nice and warm. Um, I don't actually make cookies in advance. I make uh, batch cookie dough. And so I keep the cookie dough in the freezer. And then you can, uh, basically using a small toaster oven, is I can have fresh cookies anytime. Just takes a few minutes. So that way I have my snacks for today. So I hope you don't mind. I'm going to have cookies in front of you. Um, hmm. Everyone here hasn't caught you. Wow. Cool. Really quick, have you ever looked at Kali on security? Um, I have a Kali installation, but um, I don't do a whole lot with hacking tools, and so it's just like, hmm, okay, for me. Hmm. Eric, I think I can manage yours. <laughs> All right. Hmm. Wow, well, that's so rude to eat in front of everybody, but it's just so good. Um, I ended up making a, um, I wanted to experiment with various ice creams, and so I made a snickerdoodle cookie dough ice cream. That was amazing. All right. So, um, topic one is um, kind of you get what you pay for in business, right? Um, now, I do a lot of, um, a lot of um, uh, online-y type stuff, like uh, a lot of my clients are either in Southern California or Boston or, um, you know, various other places. And so um, the thing about the economy, we have a global economy. Now, if I do local work, I can usually charge a little bit more for local stuff. Um, but uh, if I'm competing online, then, then I can't always get the, uh, you know, get the, the rate that, that you may necessarily want. And so I just kind of keep things down a little bit, you know, a little bit lower to, um, a little bit lower to, to the world there. So, um, what I wanted to uh, to look at though is that um, there's this one group I do projects with, and um, they had sent me a you know a, a request for a quote for a project, so they kind of saved me for some of the more difficult things to do because I can generally track stuff down given enough time, and and uh, a lot of what I do is resolving issues from you know third world country cheap sites that have been developed which we're still kind of in the middle. Well, what ended up happening is that they have this project that's really, really, really was supposed to go live yesterday and they just couldn't get the thing working right. And so I get all these frantic messages yesterday, like, would you help, uh, you know, get this back up online? And, and so I'm like, well, I'll see what I can do. And so the problem is, is they're, they're hiring again. It's, I think it's like a third party, a uh, third world country. Now I told them that, you know, usually, you know, I, I can do the site for half of what I usually would because there's another site we have in the network that's very similar to it. I can grab that code, you know, I can grab all that code and then I can redeploy it with their slight edits and tweaks. And I said, I can just do that for a couple hundred bucks. Well, they went with somebody that would only charge a hundred bucks to do this whole site. 
Well, the problem is I already have, I'm already about a hundred bucks into this myself personally. I could have had the entire site up, done on schedule a long time ago, but they wanted to go to the third world developers and then they got all sorts of issues. Then we have JavaScript conflicts. So then I, I grabbed a copy of the website, deployed it on the development server, which still isn't pointed right. And I'll probably be the one to resolve that later on tonight. Um, but the site now, uh, there's a script that we had to pull in from someone else that is a little finicky. Well, it's not working. And I think it's Java, you know, JavaScript conflict somewhere else on the site. And the problem is that um, uh, I could have had everything done with an easy done script, done everything myself, gotten it all done for half the time they're going to pay just to get the thing launched and they're late now. And it's kind of uh, the, what I wanted to say about all that is that it is, um, uh, you get what you pay for. You might get half the rate you will at a, as a, at an Indian developer or something over third world developer, but the quality is so bad. In fact, as I deployed this today and I got looking through the theme files, I deployed the site. I'm like, even my duplicator system did not properly duplicate things. So I'm like, well, that's interesting. So I went back through and I found out that they hard coded their own development server into the theme files. Like, oh Lord, this is going to be a giant mess. And so I went through, did that. Not only are they putting it in the theme files, they're putting it in the parent theme files, not the child. There is a child theme folder that they are using the child theme and they're editing the parent theme files. And guess what? The theme already has an update. If whoever pushes that update button's gonna wipe out the whole thing. <laughs> Joke's on me though. I already have a copy of everything and I began the process of moving everything into the child theme. Well, the problem is you hire some third world developer. They can throw something up that'll quote be passable to a person who doesn't know what they're doing, but I can see all these errors. And I said, this is going to cause a huge problem when we go to update this in a couple of months. And they're like, well, I'll pass the information to them. I'm like, I don't want to. No, I'm, I am not the one dealing with these people. I don't want to. I'm going to come in behind them and sweep up their mess, but it's going to cost you more money. So by trying to save money, they have shot themselves in the foot. Don't try to save money on something like that. You got to hire somebody who's not going to charge you an arm and a leg, but at the same token, you do not want to, uh, you do not want to, um, just go with, you know, this guy, I mean, they were charging half what I was charging and I was charging half what I usually charge just because I knew I could do it quickly because they needed something simple, but oh, well, that's that. All right. Let's, um, let's have a look at our comments here. Mmm. Wow, those are good cookies. Mmm. Yeah, Ryan, you need to be jealous of these cookies. Because they're like, they're cooked just enough to be a little crispy around the edges with this really soft, gooey center. Mmm, wow. And they're still warm. Mmm. I'm eating coffee nut M&Ms. Nice. Coffee nut M&Ms? Like chocolate covered coffee beans? I'm jealous now. Had homemade orange creamsicle. Ooh, that sounds good. Last name. Um, I'm going with Lundstead, Eric. Eric Lundstead, is that correct? First switch to Linux live stream. I'm usually fast asleep when you do them. <laughs> Being from Ireland. All right, Liberty Paul. Um, hey, welcome. Yeah, I thought every now and again I'd do an earlier one. That way, you know, some of the people across the pond can watch them. So, cool. Maybe I'll try and do more in the middle of the afternoon. Trying to save money is not always good. Amen to that. Sometimes it is, you know, um, and it's kind of that balance. You just got to be wise consumers. You know, if you're going to save money by going to a third world developer for a website that is a security centric WordPress website, yeah, you're going to hurt yourself. It's going to, it's going to cost us because for me to go through and get everything working, I'm going to end up having to charge them more than what I would have already charged them to build the whole thing myself. Because it's, you know, it's the same thing. I had a guy can come in for another site and he's like, these people want to do this cheap. I'm like, okay, if you want to do cheap, use this theme because I've used it a whole lot of times and I'll do this for like 250, just cheap, fast. They didn't want that. Well, how much for this theme? Well, that one would be 750. 
Why? Well, it's just buying a theme. Well, because I'm not familiar with it. I'm going to end up spending a whole lot of time having to figure out all the idiosyncrasies of that one little theme. So, you know, that's kind of kind of that. How many people who keep missing the stream are coming in? Lots of people. All right. Maybe maybe I need to do some early morning ones too. catch the rest of you guys. <laughs> um... Cheap RCA tablet. Yeah, careful of the RCA brand. RCA, a while back, I mean, that was a brand we used to have, like VCRs and things, and they were all right. Now I think they're just so crappy. I bought an RCA um, uh, sound system, cheapo sound system from Walmart. I realized that because my speakers were fine, I just needed a new receiver. I should have just gone down to Goodwill and picked up a cheap one at Goodwill for half the price. It would have been better. Um but I got it only a couple months ago, and it works, but it's just giving me a lot of, like, a lot of noise that, well, huh, I don't know. Hello, Lamer Linux. Saving money, the tablet I'm looking at is $40. That is what I call, Ryan, a craplet. It will suck. Don't do it. Spend an extra, spend an extra 100 bucks, get something that's decent. That's what I would recommend. I have, where's mine at? I actually I spent this spent about a hundred on this. It's a floor model, um, but uh, what is this? I think it's an eight inch, and it's a Dell brand actually. So it's a Dell tablet. Love it. Um, so I think it's still running KitKat, um, but it's it's a, a nice nice little tablet to use for Skype calls and quick internet searches and things like that. I did find that KitKat um, for your um, uh, KitKat for your uh, uh, Kodi remote seems to cause problems. I was having all sorts of problems with Kodi ever since I moved here. Well, that's about the time when I put it on that tablet instead of the Android phone. And so I took it off of that and moved my remote over to my iPad instead and haven't had any issues. Did I miss anything? Not much. Um, you missed my, my rant about um, people trying to save money by going with third world developers and then having to come back in and spend twice as much money. Because here's the thing. If you ask me to build a website and I'm building it from scratch and I have more control over it, I'm going to use the theme files that I've been developing over the last five years. I know every inch of it. I know how quick it is. I know how to quickly do the adjustments. I know how to drop in the scripts and I do things without plugins. Well, when you do a third world country, they're going to grab some theme that they that they're probably pirating already because they bought it once for one site license. They're going to site deploy that multiple times. And so they're already violating copyright. And then they're going to loose it up with a whole bunch of plugins. And they're going to hard code anything that that doesn't pass with you into the theme. Well, you go and update the thing. It's going to wipe everything out in the site. And then you'll come back and go, oh, I just don't understand what's going on. And that's kind of it. So, but if I'm doing it from the get go, I'm going to save you a lot. But if I have to come in behind your third world developers and fix stuff, it's probably going to spend twice as much on my rate. So that's that. Love those kind of cookies. Yeah. Uh, snickerdoodles are one of my favorites because the cookies are really good and the dough is really good. So you can't go wrong if you have a cookie that's really good, like ginger snaps, the cookies are good, but the dough is not really good. Um, chocolate chip cookies. I like the dough a whole lot more than the cookies. But snickerdoodles, oh yeah, the dough's good, the cookie's good, and the ice cream's good. Mm. Human ignorance will always be a natural exploit. <laughs> Sleep at 10 o'clock? It's actually 11 p.m. where I am, but whatever. <laughs> Speaking of cookies, where, where is my browser cookies? Um, you know what? Hmm. Maybe I'll make them this weekend. Let's see. If I do third-party cookies, if I plan on doing third-party cookies as a tinfoil hat time this uh, this Sunday, then uh, I know Saturday. I think I'm pretty clear. If I have the time, I'll uh, I'll see if I can make some cookies on Saturday, and I'll make my browser cookies again. Never make short-term savings. It will cost you more in the long run. Yes. Make sure though that like in web design, make sure that you're, you're even having a third party auditor or someone like, like for me, a lot of people keep me in their back pocket and just pay me a little bit to do simple research stuff because for whatever reason, I'm this brilliant data miner. And so I just kind of, 
you know, if somebody says, hey, I want your opinion on this, I can give you my, my honest opinions about things, even if it's something that I either can't do or won't do or, or whatever else. And, you know, that ended up being the case with um, a group. Um, um, my cousin runs the magic shop at a, at a uh, game store um, up north. And, uh, you know, I had done some brief consulting with them on their on their shopping system. Well, I wouldn't do a shopping system, a, a, a point of sale shopping system as elaborate as they did. But I did act as a liaison to interface between a few people to say, you got to switch companies. These guys are idiots. And they switched companies. And, and in three months time or six months time, I forget what it was, three or six months time, must have been six months time. Now their entire POS system is working perfectly, perfectly integrated with a very good website. They're all happy with it. You know, they paid me a few bucks just to say, yeah, do this or no, don't do that. You know, and that was kind of it. Cookies stuck in USB ports. Instructions not clear. Yeah, keep your cookies out of your USB ports. Um, and keep them out of your Xbox tray as well. If you've seen uh, Diary of a Wimpy Kid, you know, where the... Uh, Manny puts puts the cookies inside of uh, Greg's uh, must have been a PlayStation or something. Um, kind of camera do I use for live streaming? Uh, my main camera is a Logitech C920 camera, and the kitty cam. Hi, kitty. The kitty cam is a Logitech uh, 620, I think C620. Um, and, um, that one there, let me find that one. They're both HD cameras. The 922 is, is quite a bit better. It has, you know, a, a glass lens instead of, um, I don't know, a composite. It has stereo audio instead of the, the mono. And it's really not a whole lot more expensive. I got the C620 for the kitchen cooking because it has a swivel head joint, which is a whole lot better for, for that application. But uh, there's that. There's 4K models out there. There's also the C922. But from what I've seen on the C922, um, it is, uh, it's, uh, it's not a real significant improvement over, uh, uh, over the 920, but it's like twice as expensive. Hmm. $100 online, specifically 117 What's is it R? It is still if it's RCA. I'm a little leery of RCA at this point. Um, I had Toshiba's are good, except the speakers on Toshiba. I don't know why, but every Toshiba device I've ever had, the speakers were horrible. Um, I really like the Dell, and I got the Dell because I, I I I use Dell as much as I can. I just find that their hardware is good, and they've never really been huge on the bloatware. Although I think it's getting worse. Short term investing. Tell me who has invested. Everything into cryptocurrencies. Um, yeah, I'd be very wary of cryptocurrencies, especially in light of the um, the malware attack, um, because since that was all Bitcoin and all these things are Bitcoin. Oh, <laughs> I don't think you want a cookie. I don't think you like cookies. Um, the uh, uh, with the. With all of these malware going or uh, ransomware is all going with um, um, with your uh, Bitcoin, it would not surprise me to see uh, legal restrictions being placed on Bitcoin. What? You want my cookie? I'm going to give you a little piece. I doubt you're going to like it. No? No? He doesn't like it. Galaxy Tab 4, yeah, those aren't too bad. Love Android, but never on earth get an Android tablet. I don't know. I don't mind I, I don't mind my Android tablet. Now, I don't use any tablets for anything like downloading massive apps. I use them for, for catching up on email and, and basic internet searching stuff while I'm doing other things, stuff like that. Probably just iTunes for things, especially I'm more invested in music side of things. Um, yeah, you know what? Here's something else we can t talk about and comment on. Be cautious of, um, of buying music, buying movies and things on iTunes because it keeps you, um, not loyal, but dependent. So I had a comment, um, 
Those cookies are too good. I had a comment where someone was asking me how we can get iTunes installed on Linux. And I'm not, I've never bothered trying because I hate iTunes. Even on my iPhone, I don't use iTunes for anything. No, not a chance. In fact, I will not plug my iPhone into my Mac, period. I don't want them to know that each other exist. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll use Linux and whatever else to manage it. Um, but be be warned about that because if you want to make the switch, the, the challenge is the reason Apple does that, the reason Windows is starting to do that with their Groove music, and the reason Android's doing that with the Google Play, Samsung's doing it, it because it locks you into the platform. So if I come out and I say, uh, if I come out and I say, well, I, I, I'm really frustrated with Apple and I'm going to switch now to Android, right? Well, you have this less incentive to switch because you've bought all of this music that is now locked into your iOS devices. And if you move from iOS devices over into Android devices, now you are risking losing all of that music. And that is a dangerous thing. So what do I do? Well, even on my iPhone... Um, what I use on my iPhone even is um, I use VLC because on VLC I can interface this directly with my NAS and I can download songs directly in VLC so I don't even use the app for the um, for the iPhone at all so that's kind of what I what I do with that um, so basically then I'll if I want music or something I can buy a CD rip the CD onto my digital media center, and then I can distribute that to the various computers that need it from that perspective. 7, 12 a.m., wow. Kauai? Is that where you're at? Clayton, where are you at? 7, 20 a.m., I'm trying to picture where that is. Here we say biscuits instead of cookies. Mm. Well, they're good biscuits then. $20 tablet from Digiland. It has ads, malware-like services, and the build number says it's a random Chinese Ubuntu computer. Yeah, I, I had a Digiland once. Those are scary. The original craplets. Shouldn't be up right now. 16 minutes. Another minor point about cheap web designers. They'll position everything as absolute. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. I like asking a lot of questions and it's like, and, and being very, very clear about what you want, what you need, all those kinds of things. Um, the things I've seen in the years I've been doing web design is kind of scary. I'm used to stuff digestive biscuits. We have them into our video player as a child. <laughs> you must have been a joy. <laughs> Hello, Bad Wolf. How are you? Hello to the kitty. Yep, kitty's chilling over here. Let me see if I can find the. Where's the kitty cam? There's where kitty's chilling now. He's just over here, like, yeah. Hell meow, yes, hell meow, hell meow, hell meow, hell meow, kitty kitty, meow. <laughs> Phone just now notified me to switch is live. Yeah, it went on what, how long, what, uh, seven, no, uh, 20 minutes ago, 20 minutes ago. Hey, Tommy, how are you? Your project, I hardly call it Xenial in one go. Never buy music from iTunes, even when I was on Windows. I use 7 Digital Boot Camp and HiResAudio.com uh, high for music. Cool. Or buying physical direct from an artist, of course. Yep. How do I make bootable USB for Linux? Um, if you are on Windows, I think you said you're on. Um, uh, what's the name of that program? Um, somebody somebody will, will have the name of that program. Um, I have a, a video on it early on my channel on um, on how to make them on Windows. I forget the name of the program, but we can look it up here in a few minutes. Oh, Australia. Okay, that makes sense. 
Windows 10 to Linux. Yeah. Yes, Windows is very intrusive. Is Asus good when it comes to phones and tablets? Um, I'm not sure I've had an Asus tablet. Um, their computers are pretty good. <clears throat> Feral Cat adopted us the other day. Nice. <laughs> yeah, with cats, you don't adopt cats. Cats adopt you. Etcher for making bootable USBs. Uh, Unet Booten or Undi Booten, whatever that one is. Unet Booten is the one that uh, most of the people will recommend, so that'll work. All right. Well, let's have a quick look at um, uh, Matthew Moore did a video last night looking at security things. So let's talk a little about Linuxy and security-ness. Um, and um, I gotta say for the most part, um, uh oh. There we go. I got a little notice like stream health wasn't good. All right. So um, what um, Matthew Moore looked at is he went into CVE details and he wanted to show that the, um, the amount of security um, issues in the top 50, the Linux kernel had the highest number of issues. And I think products. Actually, if you look at products, if you look at vendors, it's Microsoft. Um, but looking at products, so what he wanted to say here is that there's a lot of problems on Linux, and so we need to stop saying this. And so we're going to talk a little bit about this, because I think it's important, because there's a few different issues going on. First, we have to talk about issues that are, uh, that are currently present. The advantage of Linux over Windows is that when a bug is made known on Linux, it is usually resolved within the day, and then push live for most people to download and to make available pretty quickly. So the problem with looking at this number like this is that the Linux kernel is something that the Linux kernel itself is, you know, ever since they started keeping track of this, which is 1999, well, they've been keeping track of the Linux kernel since 1999. Windows 7, which is the other thing he pulled out to say there's only 708 issues uh, in, in here with Windows 7, Windows 7 only started seven years ago, or five was it? seven years ago. So you're talking about something that since they started to keep track to now, the total amount of bugs found is 1800 versus Windows 7 only from 2010 until now. 708. So first, you're not even on the same comparison level. Okay. Secondly is how quickly are things reported? There are going to be a lot of vulnerabilities in Windows 7 that went unreported because if they were found by Microsoft, they would not have made the bug report. They would have just patched it. This is just external bug reports versus Linux uses the system to track the, mal the, uh, uh, the, the vulnerabilities. So the fact that Linux is the highest on this list is not in any way surprising to me. There's not a problem with this. This is not a ch an issue. This is not a challenge. This is not a problem, okay? Because they are patched so quickly. But look at what the, look at what the, uh, the Samba uh, issue. That is a vulnerability that went completely unknown and unreported for so long because people did not report it. And then it causes giant malware attack. And so first thing to remember about looking at this list is this is a list of all known details. This is not in currently open bugs. This is a list of all bugs tracked. The question is how many of these 1840 vulnerabilities are, are patched? Uh, I think all of them, I'm pretty sure. How many of the windows? I probably all of them, all other ones, probably all of them or most of them outside. You know, we could probably leave flash player off the list. I'm pretty sure that's never patched. But um, the thing is, is that this isn't a list to say 
Linux, look, look, Linux can be bad. Look at how many vulnerabilities. This is a long-term ongoing tracker. And Microsoft itself, who finds the vulnerabilities, would not release the bugs to this. They would just patch them. Right? So that's one of the things to keep in mind. The second thing, though, to keep in mind with Linux, it is a smaller attack vector for the desktop users. Not for the server users, but for the desktop users. Right? So... You have that issue going on, and uh, with that issue going on, um, obviously Linux has a much wider base. Talk about desktop operating systems, Windows is the, is the number one. Linux is not. But if you're talking about, uh, if you're talking about overall world global deployment, Linux is number one. So it also isn't too surprising that there's a high number on here. But remember that the Linux numbers goes back to 1999. The Windows 7 numbers only goes back to 2010 when Windows 10 was released. And so this kind of tracks all of the various issues that are on there. But these are patched items. The difference is Linux patches them immediately. Microsoft waits for the next patch Tuesday unless they cancel patch Tuesday for some goofy reason. So... That's kind of one of those um, one of those things to um, um, to keep in mind about this. So let me catch up on comments, then we'll move on to the next point we're gonna make here, if I can remember it. Mint is good distro to start. Sorry, Bad Wolf. Most of us recommend Mint. <laughs> um, and I like Mint because it, you know, Linux Linux Lite it doesn't necessarily make sure that all of the things are as resolved quite as much as Mint Mint makes it out. They're both good systems, but for a brand new user, I I'd, I'd always recommend Mint over over Linux Lite. Matthew Moore said Linux had the most, but the Linux kernel has all versions and Windows is separated. His video is targeting people switching to Linux from Windows, but is misleading. Yeah, some of his videos are. And I, I respect the guy and I've talked with him at detail a couple times. Um, but, you know, he is um, he is incorrect on that because, yes, this does match. I think you know, the comment came in well before I started talking about it. He forgot to say they were separated Windows versions. Yep. Don't you love statistics that don't make sense? Yeah, you know, a lot of people just don't know how to interpret statistics or don't know what this thing is. Mint doesn't work on some people's computers like mine. Yeah, well, I mean, Linux Lite, you're probably also going to have some issues. So yeah, Mint will not work on everybody's computer. But at the same time, it's still a, a lot smaller percentage of people that it will not work on versus some other. But I haven't tried Linux Lite under a lot of, under a lot of different circumstances as well. Recommend me a good non-flat theme that looks good on XFCE. <laughs> it's about how, how many vulnerabilities are found. Um, it is about how quickly they are patched. Correct, Mark. And that is why Linux is better. They patch them right away. Now, depending on your distro, you may not get the, the update right away. Some distros will hold on to them to make sure it doesn't break a lot of other things. But the fact is that they are available. Even if you want to go around your distro for a critical update, you can generally do that. Internet Explorer 12 is on that list. Uh, what number is Internet Explorer 12? Let's see. There's Internet Ex Oh, number 12. Number 12, Internet Explorer. Yeah, I'm not sure which version that is. Hey, JRE, look at that. All right. Disturbingly, Chrome and Firefox are pretty high on the list, but, you know, that's okay. Use Vista. Woo!
33 watching, only 8 light. Wait a minute. Thirty-three watching, and only eight likes. Okay, yeah, I, I I made a troll really mad today at me. It was it was kind of funny. Forget the community can make patches, not Windows. I like Ubuntu. ICQ still exists. Woo! <laughs> just becoming, uh, j just become, uh, um. Uh, personified, yeah. All right. So let's see. Mint is nice. Let's see. Never had issues with Linux Lite. Yeah. Boring in the long run. Why do you say it's boring in the long run? I mean, I, I had a fun issue with cubes today. Like, the biggest problem I have with this big new computer here is the um, the um, BIOS. Like, the motherboard is a gigabyte motherboard. If I ever have to buy a motherboard, I will av avoid that brand at all costs. The BIOS is horrendous. I cannot go in and manually configure the the uefi manager i have to do everything through the terminal and so i have to if something gets messed up in a bootloader i have to load it somehow into something anything i can get the load into and then install the the boot manager the efi boot manager and then i have to go in and do all the manual things well every time i update a distro it's like hey we're gonna update the bootloader oh please don't so i try and Watch all my updates now. Make sure nothing updates the bootloader because it just drives me mad having to fix the bootloader. You can never remember how to do it. I think I should do a video on it very soon just so that for my own records, next time it happens, I'll be able to walk through it a lot quicker. But uh, like my Dell here, the BIOS on this is awesome. I can go in and, and manually set in uh, new options. But this Gigabyte uh, BIOS, can't do that. Horrible. Horrible bios. I'm going to miss some of these comments here, I'm pretty sure. Hmm. Can you game on Linux? There's an entire uh, channel where the guy games on Linux. So uh, check out that one. It's like the Linux gamer or something. Only reason why I carefully update. Screw that bootloader. Yep. That's what happens. Hey, Anna, how are you? <laughs> Here's my snack. <laughs> All right. So I guess the next thing we're going to talk about here on Linux security... And this is something I'm, I'm mentioning more and more, but the amount of Linux distros that are coming with Wine pre-installed. And a lot of it is to capture that Windows market to say, you can run your Windows programs over here. Well, first, no. You can't always run your Windows programs just because it has Wine. But secondly, it will allow um, malicious Windows-based malware to go. So somebody sent me the link in the... Um, in, in one of my comments where a guy's used Ubuntu and he had wine installed and he actually puts the, um, he actually puts the, uh, the WannaCry um, virus on his computer intentionally. Now it's not gonna come through through the worm like has been infecting most of the computers, but a direct attack vector like a, a um, fraudulent email could get in there. And that's the problem is if you have a Linux system that you have wine installed, you are risking getting Windows viruses. And we have to keep that in mind. So we want to say no to the Linux distros that are configuring Wine by default out of the box. You don't want to do that. It might even be safer to have a specific dedicated Linux box just for Wine programs. But that's not always uh, always reasonable. And that's not what I um, um, that's not what I do. Like this one here, um, this computer over here, I'm running play on Linux so I can play the one or two Windows games that I want to play on it. 
Um, but you have to keep in mind that um, that if you put Wine on a Linux distro, you are opening it up to the attack vectors in Windows. It's, I mean, the worms will probably have a harder time getting in, but the direct attack vectors, the phishing attacks, the email viruses, things like that can still execute. And so we have to... Uh, keep in mind and teach people as you're getting Linux distros, do not get Linux distros that have Wine pre-installed. Only install Wine if you have a specific reason. And I would try and do that in either a separate account or something else to isolate a little bit. I think that that's really the, the best option there. Um, so that being said, that's kind of my thoughts on, on security. And obviously the things go without saying, be intelligent, be smart, blah, 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 uh, whatever. All right. So let's see. So what games are people doing on Linux? This is something I still want to get into a little bit more. Um, I gotta, I gotta connect with my friend who plays some steam games. I want to see how I can get some steam games running, but what other games do you guys play on Linux? I know I do, I do Warcraft. Uh, Warcraft 3 works just fine. 30 out of 50 games are supported on Linux. That's cool. Steam OS is only for gaming, pretty much, and even for gaming on Linux, I wouldn't recommend Steam OS. Yeah, I think Steam OS is, is more of a gimmicky thing, but it'd be a cool thing to do. If I get more into it, I very well may put a Steam OS on this one because I have the hot swappable hard drives. Um, makes sense to me. Um, let's see. Ultra Black Theme Pack on XFC Look. Huh. Cool. Yeah, the downside on, on cubes is it's running, is it? Uh, yeah, it is XFCE, but it has its own pre-built themes and they recommend not adding new themes into it for, you know, obvious security reasons. But that's, there's not a lot of modern, you know, good flashy looking ones, not the ones that I like necessarily, but want to cry and whine. Yeah, I want to cry and whine too. Give me some cheese with it also. <laughs> One, it's cinnamon itself is nice but boring, has limitations. Mint is conservative and has many limitations. Not cutting edge, limited based on DEs. Mm, okay, I can see that. Not really much difference between SteamOS and Debian with Steam installed. Yeah. I looked another brand named Nextbook with the tablets. Looked like a laptop when closed, which I like. 45 at the local Walmart. 178 on there. Wow. That might be a dumb clerk special. If you can find something like that, buy it. Yeah, know what a dumb clerk special is? That's uh, that's when the price is marked incorrectly on something and you walk away for a really good deal. So if you need Windows programs, use my Windows 7 virtual machine. There's another option for Windows programs. Run a virtual machine with it. No Linux users download EXEs to install them. This is very true. <laughs> but it's possible. But I could have. <laughs> Windows 7 dual booted but not updated. You know why? I bet it's going to be having to do with spyware like not malicious people spyware but Microsoft branded spyware another hard drive with Linux Mint XFCE it's, that hard drive is only for wine and play on Linux gaming yes Unreal Engine Battlefield okay for Windows program wine is a waste of time Just go for VM of Windows yeah, I mean, if you have, you don't always have the system resources to do that, though, Liam. Like, um, this computer, I easily can. Whoa, I got the Elf Alpha thing going. Um, this computer, I can easily do that uh, because I have so much RAM in this thing. But it'll, it'll eat a lot of system resources running a virtual box. So you have to keep track of that. 
Civilization 5 and The Sims 4. You know, I still have a Civilization 4 game going from 2013 because I really don't play many video games. I'm just kind of stuck. Like, the whole continent started to attack me all at once, and I gotta, I gotta get on their good side. I think I need to boot in, give them a 10, you know, a 10-turn peace treaty, give them all my gold. Because the problem is, if I don't accept their peace treaty once it pops up, they take the next city and I lose my modern armors. And I think I gotta rebuild my thing with my modern armors. I think that's what I gotta do. Today always stays on the safe side. Wine is red. <laughs> Download Mint 18.1. Yes, 18.1 is what I'm running on this computer here. It works great. And as I said, go game now and listen to the stream. Playing Battlefield 1942 at the moment. All right. We'll take red and white wine as I'm not racist. <laughs> Be fine. Just out of curiosity, what desktop did you choose? Because cinnamon, if you push it, it will freeze. I don't know. I don't, I've never had a problem with cinnamon freezing on any of the computers I've run it on. Wait, Tom String, Yorkshire tea? Yes, Yorkshire tea. A friend of mine brought it back from Manchester and he was over there. What's your favorite rolling release distro? Hmm. I don't use a lot of rolling releases personally, but um, I do um, I do have a rolling release on Op OpenSUSE, I think. I have a rolling release OpenSUSE floating on somewhere. Looking for my other camera here. Okay. Oh, I don't have room for that. Just gonna move the other camera around and uh, show you something on the screen here. But I think what I'll do is I'm just gonna move my other camera here. Let me see. Get this guy set back up. Let me. Uh... All right. I'm gonna show you guys a kitty cam while I get my other camera situated here real quick. I'm gonna. You guys a quick preview of what I'm doing on the cooking channel stuff here so I got some uh, uh, some video that to edit here and let's see just have to uh, update the uh, over here All right, I'm still not completely happy with my intro, um, but <clears throat> here is the intro to the cooking channel, and then um, what I'm doing is I'm going from here, um, I'm going to be doing the ice cream. Check, check. All right, there we go. The uh, mic was going up. Yeah, um, I think I need a new um, I need a new cable for my uh, microphone that uh, gets a little jolty occasionally. Um, so bummer. Can you hear me now? Oh, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Hello, hello, hello. Uh, my cable on my uh, microphone every now and again goes goes a little, little goofy. Um, audio stutter a bit when on the kitty cam. Yeah, that's possible. All right. So here is the uh, here is what I'm doing on the uh, home cooking channel. We're just getting the intro done. Yeah, I uh, I had some some issues on the microphone. It should be resolved now. But here is the start. All right, so here we kind of get the kitchen view over here. And then um, what I'm working on here is how to get the uh, banner flows going up and down here on um, how to do this.
made some, some excellent ice cream in storage without ice cream makers. Again, this is home cooking hacks. So I use these nice glass Pyrex pans, and this here is actually my Kinroot Sunday ice cream. Uh, of course, vanilla ice cream with peanuts and chocolate syrup. My chocolate syrup is also homemade. We'll do that on another episode. So the ingredients that we need to make ice cream without an ice cream maker, uh, very simple things. One thing I want is a Pyrex pan, and I want to go as large of a pan as I can. So this one... I'm not sure about that font on the, the blue font there. It's a little hard to read. It's e it's pretty easy here. It might be hard to read on um, on the uh, system, but you can see what I'm doing there. So I'm using... Um, I use, I'm using Caden Live for all the editing, and then um, what I've done is I've saved the uh, transition format so they'll always be the same transitions. It doesn't have to be frozen for any long length of time. Usually about the time I start making ice cream, I throw it in the freezer. The next thing you want is... So I do another one here. Um, I believe this is a two-quart... Uh, four cup, so yeah, that could be two-quart... Um, Pyrex glass container, and they come with these nice lids, buy these for like four or five bucks. You can store your ice cream. And then I think the next container. part, I'm not, actually I'm pretty sure this one does not have the next portion there, but there's kind of the uh, the start to to the thing. Of course, here's the, um, the photo of the ice cream that I'm making. So I have a nice vanilla stick, a cinnamon stick, some fruit there. Um, and so that'll probably be the first video that I have done. I'm just, I should hopefully finalize it today. Um, okay, the second one is indeed harder to read. Yeah, it's the same font used in my logo. So here's my logo. And uh, I think this is Lucidia font, if I remember. And I think this is called Destroy, which is pretty easy to read here. I think maybe I either need to change the color or add some background. Just do something to it to make it uh, there. Uh, how am I doing the labels? Uh, like the sliding labels, I assume. So um, over here is the uh, Caden live video clip. And so what I'm doing here is I have the image, which is, let's see if I can find the image there. Okay, so the actual image looks like this. Um, and so the uh, I have an image here of a 90% transparent background. This is the same color as the inner gray on the pan. And then I've matched the text colors over here. So swapping the fonts around. So this is the ping image. And then you import that into your Caden Live. And then I double click on this. Um, which will enable me to uh, set the length of the or the width of the video to 15 seconds. And then if you right click and I add a custom, the uh, uh, home cooking hacks fade in, what this is set to do is on my first keyframe, I start out um, 300 pixels. Um, down from the top of the screen at 30% opacity. And then one second in, I'm back up to full size, uh, zero, zero origin point. And then I run that until about a second before the end, and then I reverse the process. So once I built that one time, you can come up here into the menu, and you can save the effect, and then you can call that so that way it's perfectly consistent across all of the ingredient tabs. So I have the... Uh, kitchen stuff there. I have the ingredient tab is over here. Um, so this is actually all the ingredients that go into my ice cream is cream, sugar, vanilla, and milk. And then, of course, whatever flavoring and stuff that you're having there. So that's kind of what I'm doing with that. All right. Let's get caught up on the comments here. Let's see. Gave up the iTunes account for Linux. Kitty can audio, kitty cam audio stutters. I'll have to check that a little bit more. Let's see. Yeah, I'm hoping to, I'm hoping to finish this video today and put it up. I'm probably going to have the, uh, I'm probably going to have the videos. What I'm going to do initially is just kind of keep all of the videos on, um, 
Um, I'm gonna put all my videos on uh, private mode until I get like five or six of them up there. But I am gonna link the private video links onto my Patreon account on the public end of the Patreon account. And so um, if you're following me and you wanna see the videos before the channel actually goes live, and I'll let people know when they're up there. Um, but uh, that's kind of what the goal is, so I can do a hard rollout. And hopefully in, hopefully, like I wanted to have the channel launched in April, but that didn't happen for a variety of reasons. Um, so this is kind of the, uh, the behind the scenes and the cooking stuff. So I actually have, why don't you guys tell me what's the next video I should do? of the ones that I have. So I have the footage for doing ice cream. I have the footage for making homemade pudding, uh, smoothies, homemade yogurt. I think my pineapple is does not work. I'm, I was having a problem with some of my video. Um, uh, it was a little stuttery, so I have to work on a different uh, build for uh, the kitchen studio. But um, those are the ones I have. So between um, Making pudding, making yogurt, or um, making a smoothie. Which video should be the second one once I'm done with the ice cream video? Please do a steak recipe. Hello, Kim. Is it Cam Camlesh? How are you, Camlesh? Okay. I missed something, I was on the phone, and it pauses my hotspot. Bummer. Um, I've just been looking at the uh, video, uh, video stuff for the cooking stuff. Love life hacks. So here's another question I have. I was thinking about combining minimalism with the home cooking channel. Um, I, didn't, didn't, I just didn't know where else to put it, and I definitely don't want to do yet another channel. Um, so I'm trying to figure out where to put minimalism in, which I kind of spread on the Linux a little bit anyway. Well, the wife was interrupting. I asked about OCC recipe. It's not the original with her, but I'll post it shortly. OCC. Cooking will be with no gadgets. Uh, since the fanciest gadget I have is a toaster. The, exactly my point. In fact, the video I tried to do the other day that um, I got too much stutter to be usable is why you should make bread from scratch rather than um, rather than making bread in a bread machine. So my goal is a minimalist kitchen, how to do all this stuff without all of the junk and paraphernalia. Like I have a friend that had like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of gizmos and gadgets. If there was a, as seen on TV, they probably had it. I mean, chocolate fountains and bagel makers and, and bread machines and all this kind of stuff. I'm like, that's just, it takes up so much space. But like I make my ice cream perfectly fine without uh, without um, ice cream makers or things like that. So yeah, all of my cooking is going to be done without fancy things. I think the fanciest stuff I might have is is a blender and and uh, a mesh sheath or something. I don't know. Okay, two cup measuring, one cup orange juice, two tablespoons honey, two tablespoons. Heavy cream and whisk. That sounds good. Toaster. I'm still banging a slice on the grill. I have a I have a toaster oven too. I don't have a toaster, but I have a toaster oven. Um, which because I got rid of the toaster because the toaster ovens like, you know, I can make toast in it. I can bake cookies in it. I can do a lot of other little miscellaneous things in a toaster oven. And a lot of people are like, toaster ovens need to go away. So many fires are caused by them. Just don't leave it plugged in, silly. Don't forget about it. Maybe get a smart toaster so you can have your cell phone notify you 15 times when it's done cooking. Come on. Yeah, I will do my hardest to have it up as soon as I can. Um, you have to make your videos unlisted if you make them. Yes, you are correct. They will be unlisted, not private. You, they will be unlisted, not private. I knew what I was talking about. I just didn't say it right. <laughs> Homemade yogurt. Okay. Oh, uh, okay. Uh oh, I have two two votes for yogurt, one for smoothie. I have one for pudding. Smoothies. Uh oh, two smoothies, two pudding. No yogurt. Yo, uh, no yogurt. Okay, no yogurt. Okay, no yogurt. <laughs> uh, 
Linux Mint Cinnamon lighter than Windows 10 Pro. I'm pretty sure they're a... Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. Should use about 400 megabytes less on system memory. Level 1 Tech, you can find some good info on how to use a dedicated GPU for gaming. Yes. Level 1 Techs, they're awesome. Do a video comparison of OS that runs fully on RAM. They are really good. Yeah, somebody asked me to do something on Tails the other day, so I was thinking about it. Mm, not need to break uh, bread making machine. Yeah, in fact, the bread that I make without the bread machine is way better than the, even the same recipe. When I make it without the bread machine, it turns out just so much better. Okay. I have way too many fancy machines in the kitchen. My one of the one of the last places I've not touched yet in my minimalist approach is cleaning the junk out of the kitchen. So I might actually do a full video just on decluttering the kitchen, getting all the junk out. Um, definitely want to learn how to make ice cream without the ice cream maker. Yeah, this video should be I should be done with this pretty soon. Um, I'm hoping today. I, it uh, you, last night I figured out what I wanted to do for the for the scroll and stuff. Then I'll do. I'll probably do this with the fonts, and I'll, I'll elicit feedback to see uh, to see if I need to change the fonts around or not. I have some other font ideas. Not have too much kitchen stuff other than a toaster and a coffee machine. And a microwave and a blender. Yep, that's about what I have. Um, I'm going to use cinnamon, which is not compatible with Compass. So we'll use my Tor movies to download, like UT. Not sure what you mean there, Tommy. So Linux UV doesn't need to confuse it. All right. Looks like you need some updates. Do you take? Uh, do you? Uh, you need to take care of the Dell. Yeah. Um, the I had the Dell down for uh, for a couple of days. Um, I was working on some things. Let's see. Adobe Flash, Chromium, Firefox, LibreOffice. Yeah, it looks like about everything needs fit and updated on that. Yeah. No time like the present, right? <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah. OpenShot wants to install again. I stopped using OpenShot after they did the more recent version. It was just as bad, but only it was harder to use. So I said, I'm going to learn Caden Live instead. Thing is, make my Christmas truffle, I assume that is. Stuck with the RCA since my budget is 90. Okay, there you go. Pudding. I never tried this American pudding stuff you speak of. Yeah, you know, it's it's a little crazy, but the best, my favorite thing to do with pudding is make pudding pops. That's good. Create a Kodi application so I can watch it. Kodi application. Hmm. Hmm. I do want to mess around with the menus on Kodi. Um, I want to separate music from sermons, <laughs> and I want to put a menu there on sermons. Uh, that'd be fun. All right. All right. I lost my place again. Lost my place again. Where's my place? Um, do a video on how to use Krita. So I did, I used Krita to make my, uh, uh, my PNG files for the cooking channel, and I think I still like GIMP better. There's some, some things in Krita that make it really annoying to use. Do I know about Temple OS? No, I don't. I can't stand rice pudding. I like rice pudding. It's got to be made right, though. I'll have to look into how to make rice pudding. Never made it. Rice pudding has lots of sugar. Yeah. Well, I'm what I make is chocolate pudding, vanilla pudding, and pudding pops. It's created by a schizophrenic, which is great for an OS maker. Oh, boy. It's tracking. Or it's not, one of the two. U-Torrent. Oh, um, actually, 
I believe uh, you torn. You can get you torn. I believe on there. If not, nothing else. I mean, I have uh, transmission on Linux Mint. It's the default torrent application. They cook some Indian food, but they're spicy. You know, I'll have to learn how to make some Indian food because um, I actually uh, I actually learned how to make. What's the name of their the Indian bread? Is like Pashka or something. Um, I actually made that the other day. Figured out how to make that. That's amazing. And I did that. I had some. I had a little bit of pasta left over, and so I was going to finish up the pasta, and I'm like, I wanted garlic bread, and I didn't want to have to make bread, and so I made a flat bread, laced it with garlic, covered it with cheese. It was like the most amazing things ever. Here's an idea or so. 30 minutes or less meals with basic cook kitchen stuff. I could probably do that. I usually spend a little bit more time in the kitchen just because the kitchen is my time to get away from the computer. Um, but yeah, I could, I could actually do that. What is the camera behind me? That camera is a air sight or outdoor wide arrow or a wide spectrum IP camera. Uh Oh, my, uh, yeah, my, uh, uh, bit right transfer dropped into the red, but it looks like it's good now. Are there any videos on using GIMP? Uh, I'm sure somebody has some. I don't have any personally. Nian or Nain. Nain, okay. Banana break, banana bread. I don't like banana bread, but I'll think about it. Um, what I do like to do with bananas, though, is make chocolate-covered banana pops. Yep, you make a, uh, a homemade um, chocolate glaze by using equal parts of coconut oil and uh, cocoa powder. Sweeten it just to, just to sweetness with um, sugar, and then heat it up, cool it down, and then you put cut the bananas in half, put a popsicle stick on either end, and coat it in the sugar, and then put it in a um, put it in the freezer. It's absolutely amazing. Um, can you? Okay, so can you? Download the movies from your main computer and then move them over. Yeah, as long as you have them as the actual movie files, then that should not be a problem. Oh, this food's got the tummy on rumbling. Sorry, man. Sorry. All right. Um, a lot of videos about GIMP. It says they glow in the dark. How crazy is it? Oh, he says he's being tracked by the CIA. Um, oh. Ew. Switch to Betty Crocker. <laughs> There's my other name. <laughs> Switched to Betty Crocker, huh? Oh boy. Oh boy. Let's see if I had anything else on the agenda today. Um, let's see. Previewed some of that. No client disturbances. Um, not right this second. Uh, the last beep I had was pretty much shortly before I came onto this. Yeah, food rocks. I actually, my one of my favorite things to do is um, I make my own um, flatbread or like um, tortilla wraps. So I make my own flour tortillas and uh, make my own wraps. Uh, in fact, no, no, no. Maybe I might do that tonight again. Buffalo chicken wraps. I have chicken thawing. I'm just not sure what I'm going to do with it yet. I might just do a classic baked chicken with some, uh, cook up some rice in the bottom of the pan. That sounds good. It also says that God talks to him through the oracle. Is that like uh, uh, Oracle Virtual Box or is that like Oracle in the Matrix? Aren't we all tracked by the NSA, CIA? Who cares what else is watching? Yeah, yeah, whatever. Hey, and you're Manchester. I have friends from over there. Hey, no problem, Tommy. Keep asking questions. Way too far into conspiracy land. No, you can't go too. Oh wait, maybe you can go too far into conspiracy land. Channel is switched to kitchen. Actually, it is called Home Cooking Hacks. It exists, but there's nothing on it yet. Let me see if I can find it. Mm. Where's that other? Where's that website? There it is. Bing. Seeing if I can find it. There's no content on it yet, so it may not uh, may not show up. But let's see. Uh, 
Uh, I'm actually just going to come up here and do channels. You used to be able to just come down here and click channels. Where's channels at? There you go. Type channel. Yeah, I need to really need to start putting some content up there. Too many food channels up here. Too much competition. Let me try this. Filter channels. Yeah, I think I just need to do some some work and getting the thing going because I, I can't even find it doing a search for the exact name. I know it exists. Wow. Yeah, I need to I need to get get this guy going. Maybe I'll spend a little bit of time today doing that work on the cooking the um, the front end part of the channel because it's not even showing up there. Scary. Yeah, got it. Whatever. You channel. So literally nothing on it right now, but there it is. Um, I have. Yeah, I, I have the older versions of the intro. Let me go back over there. Let me show you the the old intro videos. So these were I had. This is the one that I was going to use as the intro video. Let me. Uh, play that real quick so I was gonna use this and I liked how the flow went except we accidentally recorded it in 720p and I wanted it in um, in 1080 and uh, because what you can see here is how well I cut that out and then we faded it into that but I like what I do now with the uh, and the other ones not uploaded yet but what I what I like to do on that one is the um, uh, uh, using the multiple different things and I added a few sound effects into it as well. Um, so there's that. Hopefully we'll have some stuff on, up there and um, that's kind of that's kind of that. <clears throat> All right. Food by suck at cooking. No, no, you, you will, we'll, we'll teach you how to do some good cooking there. <clears throat> Is Linux also vulnerable to want to crypt ransomware? Um, if you install wine, <laughs> now it's not going to worm its way in because the way that that spread so fast was a, um, the, uh, uh, Samba port 445 was open to the internet. So if your if your port 445 on a Windows machine is not open to the internet, you won't will not get that through the worm. Though you could get it through an attack vector. It also says he's locked in CIA prison. This guy's interesting. I gotta meet him. It's far too easy to eat out rather than stay at home and cook. Yeah, one of the best things they did though is I I, I moved a good 15 20 minutes away from town. That helped out a lot. website called Big Oven. It's so good. It gives you recipes based on what's in your fridge. How do they know it's in your fridge? That's kind of creepy. <laughs> can't beat a good chirpy if you can't be bothered to cook. All right. I'll keep working on one channel. I don't mind the kitchen detours. Yeah. 
I think the, the thing that's taking me a while to get the kitchen channel going is that I want to put a lot more into the video quality, like a, a lot more editing into the video quality. And editing video takes a long time. I think I prefer the old intro video. Y'all yeah, have to put the uh, I'll have to put the newer one up there and do a comparison, see which ones looks better. Should I go go for Chromebook? I don't know. I got this guy on YouTube by the name LGR Foods. LGR Foods, let's have a look. I make sandwiches, sweet! That's awesome. There's a little bistro um, not too far from where I'm at that makes some really good stuff. Man, these look good, I'll have to, hmm. You know what, I don't make enough sandwiches. I don't need a lot of bread though. I, Other than my snickerdoodle cookies and my homemade ice cream, I really don't need a lot of anything else. But I think I might have to try doing some more sandwiches and stuff like that. Homemade bread and sandwiches. Hmm. Sounds good. All right. Well, hey, my updates are complete. Save that. All right. Well, I think that uh, we've had some uh, we've had some uh, exciting times here. I'm thinking that what I want to do is kind of wrap up the stream. I need to go out and write for a little bit yet tonight, and then I'll uh, maybe try and come back and finish this guy up while I get some other work things done. I don't know. Should I do a buffalo chicken wrap tonight, or should I do uh, just some fried chicken and some rice? I don't know. What do you guys think? All right, let's see. Close that out. I think what we're going to do, I'm going to wrap up on the kitty cam. I want to test this. Is the, uh, is the audio choppy on the kitty cam? I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say this stuff, blah, 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 kitty cam is the audio choppy, blah, 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 kitty cam is the audio choppy. Let me know if that audio is choppy. Uh, I'm going to feed the kitties some kitty snacks so you guys can watch the cute kitties eat some kitty snacks and then we'll wrap this up and um, uh, let me know. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to try and wrap this up. So check out the, uh, maybe check out the Patreon page either tonight or tomorrow. And if I get this video done, then I will link it over there. I'll link it publicly um, so you don't have to. Uh, be a become a patron to, to view that, but that's where I'll put those um, for for the short meanwhile. Um, and um, in the meantime, yes, it's choppy. Okay, that is good to know. So this video causes choppiness. Some videos cause choppiness, some videos do not. Okay, well, let's go ahead and feed the kitties, and I will catch you guys later. Okay, everybody, we will catch you later.